Hello everybody, welcome to the Stand Up Sit Down. Sit Down interviews with stand up comedians, bringing you the personality behind the performer with, as ever, fellow funny man David Paris. What's up everybody, we're back. Today we also have the returning Matt Welcome. Welcome Matt. Hi, thank you very much indeed. We're going to be talking about time because Matt's actually been on the show before talking about time uh, and his theory that it doesn't exist. Yeah. And we felt, David and I felt, that actually we could have got into it more last time, but we ran out of time. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, which wasn't a lame uh, joke, not a lame joke. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm, I think this is uh, probably the, the one guest, uh, yeah, we're, we're always uh, more than welcome to have a lot of our, um, our guests back, we enjoy talking to them, most of them. Uh, but I really, Matt, Matt, you've been the one person that Ed and I have really been talking <laughs> a bit to get back on, on the show, because uh, I think I went a little bit cross-eyed when we were talking about so, some of these theory, theories and ideas before, and uh, hopefully they can be explained a little bit more to me and hopefully the audience as well. I think that last time, well, any time, I always like listen back to these shows and when we're just talking about stuff like comedy, which isn't hard to get your head around, right, just like silly mother-in-law jokes or something, I always listen back and think, oh, I could have explained that better. Yeah. Uh, and so I was knowing this, knowing that when de when there's dead air, you sort of fill it and you sort of, if you open your mouth, words come out. I didn't want to commit to any sentence <laughs> to do with time travel because it was such scientific ground. I didn't want to say anything wrong. And I think I did say one thing and it did come out wrong, so then I just stayed quiet That's for the it, rest of it. It, it kind of re reminded me when I, I went out on, on a date many years ago with a really clever girl and I was afraid <laughs> of opening my mouth and saying anything because I was like, this is going well, so just shut up and don't say anything because you're going to make yourself look stupid. But like, we're all friends here. Sometimes so I get that in my mind. head. I'll be listening to people talk in my head I'll just say don't say anything <laughs> I just know <laughs> yeah. I've got to not say anything but no uh, ask any questions because there are no stupid questions That's well the, the good thing about your project is my understanding that you are, have made it for the layman yeah absolutely I'm not qualified um, uh, I've got some qualifications I was going to put Matt Welcome O comma CSE because CSE. that's basically the qualifications I've got but I've got a love of science and I've read a lot of books on general science and cosmology and on time itself yeah and uh, I, I started asking myself, what if things just move and change? What if that's all that they do? What if there isn't a past and there isn't a future? Would that explain everything? And I, I had no particular bias. You know, I'm not saying I want it to be this way, I want it to be that way. Yeah. But I had this idea and I just pursued it. And the more I pursued it, the more I thought, I've got to write this as a book or it's going to drive me and everyone else I know mad because I'll keep going on about it. And you have written a book called Timelessness. Written a book, and because of uh, you and David, because you invited me back, I worked really hard, and I put that out on Kindle as of about 10 o'clock this morning. Oh, we gave you a deadline. <laughs> gave me a deadline. I wanted to be able to announce it you know, on, on FM, and it's just out there, so you can actually find that on the Amazon now. See so uh, your okay. Kindle sales skyrocket. Yeah. Skyrocket. This interview. So well, we're partially responsible for this as our check in the post. Or? Abs well, it's, uh, let me put it this way: if one more copy gets sold, the sales will have doubled in right. a single day. <laughs> because I, ironically, I bought the first copy unknowingly because I set the whole website thing up on Amazon, and there was a button that said "Buy your buy this book now with one click," and I clicked, and it went, "Your purchase will be delivered." I was like, "That didn't mean." I was just right. checking if it worked. So <laughs> I already bought you're, a copy. You're stealing from yourself. Exactly. Okay, so on the concept of, of time, my understanding of it was that um, time is, in science, explained as a s sequence of events. There's action and reaction. Yeah. And when you get onto the subject of time travel, yeah. science doesn't say that you can time travel, because nothing's been proven, but it doesn't outwardly say it cannot happen, right? <laughs> Yes, well, no, actually, actually, technically, some people would say that, that time travel does happen and it is happening, and even that some people have done it to a very, very small degree, like a few millionths of yeah. a second. So it doesn't outwardly say it cannot happen, science does Absolutely, it doesn't say it, it cannot happen, and the, the kind of 20 or 30 books I've read uh, about time says that it can happen. Okay. Um, and what's important is that even if something says it can theoretically happen, that's still very important. You know, it might be that we could never get enough energy to make it happen. Right. But the idea is whether it's theoretically possible. But what I'm saying is that it's not possible at all. Okay. Is that, no is that because the, our comprehension of what time travel is, is not possible? The, our, our, our theory of what we consider to be time travel, that's not actually something that, that that is possible because we've got the wrong the wrong idea of what we mean by time travel yeah that's a, that's a good way of putting it it's good understanding what what i'm saying with all of the work that i did i, I kind of started in the middle and 
And then I, as I tried to untangle what I was understanding, I moved further and further and further and back. And what I realized is you can't ask what is time yeah. or does time exist? You can ask those questions, but they're leading questions. Mm -hmm. They suggest that you're talking about a thing called time. Yeah. And the problem is, what is this thing? Okay, well, yeah. first of all, what would what science at the moment, as science best describes it, what would science say time is? <coughs> science would probably look at Einstein's relativity and it would say that time is something that is merged with space. Uh, time is that which stops everything happening at once or time is that which clocks measure. That's what Einstein said. Um, and what Einstein said was if you want to look at how a mechanical device works you look at it how it moves over time. You do some little graph, you compare where this, this piston is at one second, where it is at another second, where it is at another second. And what I'm saying is when you look at that all you're really doing is seeing that two things move, you're seeing that a piston moves, and you're seeing that a watch hand moves, and you're seeing that you can compare them. But isn't that what science is saying ti time is? Because science doesn't necessarily say time exists either, does it? it just it, That's how it describes those sequences. Well, this is the frustrating thing, because, again, if, if you have a sequence, you're saying there's a sequence over time. And I'm saying there isn't even a sequence. I'm saying everything is just doing something now. Yeah. But that's still in a sequence though, isn't it? Well, here's an, uh, it's a, a fascinating point, and this is kind of, a, this is about three chapters into the book, so it, it, we're already getting ahead of ourselves, okay, ironically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, imagine if you watched a football match and you had a video camera, yeah. and you videoed some great goal, and then you went to a publisher and said, look, I've got these great stills of this great goal. The guy lines up the shot, he takes the shot, he scores. The publisher say, says, that's great, I'll buy them off you. You go, great, here they are. But if you turned up and he said, there was this great goal, but I didn't record it, he would say, well, if you haven't recorded it, then you haven't got it, and it doesn't exist. In the world in general, if as things happen, they are not recorded. If that sequence is not recorded, then that sequence does not exist. We can't really have it both ways. But d isn't that a point that sounds like a point, but it, it's actually not a point? Though. Yeah, I know because, exactly what because you mean. Because yeah. they, we know that they did exist. Yeah. Uh, and there's evidence to show that they... Uh, yeah, uh, but I mean, even if we recorded it, right, it, that recording itself is within the sequence of events because the recording isn't isn't actually replicating the thing that well, happened, here's is the it? Problem, it's just a set of images. If we recorded it, we, then we'd have a thing that existed here now that we could put on the table that would just but be that, here No, now. but that, in, that is just representation of what happened. That isn't actually what happened, so that in itself is a new thing in time. I, I agree to an extent, but here's the thing. We're saying it's that the video is a representation of something else and I'm saying does this other thing really exist? Or Isn't not? that like saying if a tree falls in the woods and it no one's there to sound. hear it doesn't make sound but the thing is it, do it does make a sound though, doesn't it? Well what that It's question, just that we haven't taken the sound in and registered it. It's funny on the talks like Because day, that would suggest actually that way of thinking would suggest that before humans then nothing happened. Which isn't true. This is one of the problems with, with time, it's, is that all the discussions get haywire so quickly, yeah. suddenly we're talking yeah. about who shot JR okay. and okay. what about trees in the forest. So one thing to, to consider, I, the one thing is to bring it back, yes. and what I realise is to get back from these questions, what is time, can you travel, all this stuff, and say what do we actually observe. Okay. And what I think we actually observe is that things exist and that they move. So if you were to walk around the street or wherever you are at home now listening to this, look around and you'll see that things exist and they move and that's where I'm starting from. With the sequence, there's a book called Introducing Time, an excellent series of books and uh, Dave just knocked his camera over. Um, well, we don't have any evidence that this... Do we not well, we have do, the evidence that, that evidence never exists occurred. That never occurred, Evidence eh? exists never now inside the camera. So here's the thing. In this book, uh, a guy, I think Craig Callender, Ra Ralph Hedney, he says, imagine two people watching a basketball game. They see Team A score, then Team B score. Then someone gets injured. Now, as they're walking home, they can agree on this sequence of events. This is what you're talking about, the sequence of events. So he says this proves there's a sequence of events. And I say no, what they're actually agreeing on is the contents of their minds. They're saying, I remember this, this and this. And the other guy goes, yeah, I remember this, this and this. Now if they're just comparing the contents of their minds, all they're proving is that things can move and change. That their minds can change, they can leave the arena, they've got changed minds. Okay, but then in, in science, science never actually says anything's a definite rule, does it? They just say, based on evidence, this is the best yeah, we can yeah. present. And so if there's 
if you asked a thousand people that were at that basketball yeah. game, we would say to the best of our knowledge, okay, everyone's agreeing on it, so that did happen. Because yeah. even if you watch a recording of that basketball game, it's still just people observing it anyway. Yeah. So totally valid point. You I mean you could have ten thousand people, all their memories correlate. They could have five hundred video cameras, those video cameras will correlate. So I'm agreeing things happen and in a sense things have happened. The question is, as they happen, is there any other record created than does the past really exist or does it not exist at all? And we can't kind of have it both ways. So I'm saying, of course things happen, you know, well, happen. Well, I suppose in response to that question, science as it is now has said, based on all of us, what we've observed, it, the, the, those sequence has ha that has happened. That's the conclusion, yeah. yeah, yeah but you yeah. take issue with that and yeah. say, actually, that can't be proved. But are you, are you coming at that with your own proof of another theory, or are you just coming at it with another theory? I'm coming at it with a direct observation. Okay. So it's a bit like if we get a, a, a ball of tissue paper and we let it go, it falls to the ground. Yeah. Now, I don't know why that is or what does it, but I can consistently observe yeah. it. So Do you mean, you mean rhetorically? Because it is No, gravity. I mean gravity. Just gravity. It falls, yeah. So literally, we're well, not floating around this room. We're sitting on the on the ground on the chairs, yeah. What do you? Because gravity exists. Yes, that's okay. So although true. we can talk about science, we can. What I'm saying is, although yeah. we can talk about science, and science never proves anything. At a certain point, you have to go. Well, all right. Look, at least we can say gravity exists. That's yeah. not. Yeah, that's. I think. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That we all, uh, to the best of our knowledge, that is the. We come up with that, and we say. That's the conclusion. Right. Science always says that's the conclusion for now. Yeah. Uh, well, this yeah. is kind of why I'm saying that you can relax with something like gravity. You can kind of go, look, let's just relax. It's pretty much obvious that it happens, and it's not mm. just an opinion. But then that that is all relative to. I don't. Well, I don't want to confuse it by sure. saying that's all relative to time. But yeah, I want to. Uh, let's not get confused. I want to say that's all relative to the to the time that we're in and where we're at with science, because there would have been a time in human history where someone would have looked out the window and said. Well, the world's obviously not round, because look at it, it's flat. We can all agree it's flat, because sure. that's what we can see. Sure. So where does your theory sit with that way of thinking? Well, this is what I'm explaining, is that okay. my starting point is to say, look, can we be sure of anything? Because if we, if we have one of those weird yeah. conversations where we're not even sure if we all exist and you can't... That's like Descartes. That Descartes, I think, therefore I am, which yeah. my understanding of that means we don't know if we're living in artificial reality right now. Right. But he, the fact that he's even pondering his existence means he must exist on some level. I think, therefore, I am. I yes. at least am. Well, now we're getting onto some serious well, someone else said, um, questions, which, like you mentioned, you can right. go off on these tangents okay. about... Well, someone said, I'm pink, therefore I'm spam. But my right. point is that, <laughs> that to bring it back to simple cases, what I'm saying is this, we start with a very simple case. Yeah, if, if we want to get ultra-metaphysical, then I think those conversations are almost pointless because they never go anywhere. So what I'm saying is, let's pretend that gravity seems to reliably exist. That's yes. just a, a starting point. Yes. So now I'm saying, let's pretend that when I look out my window, or let's assume when I look out my window, I see things existing mm. and they can move. We could have you know, a 10-hour discussion on what existing means or a 10-hour discussion on what moving means, but I think it's kind of pointless. For the sake of argument, we'll go with that, because yeah. I think everyone would agree on gravity but and that as well. Yeah, that so we that's, look out the window, we do all agree on that's that. That's my so, starting okay. point. So right. what I'm saying is, from there, if anyone starts talking about this extra thing called time, in my opinion, they've got to start explaining what they mean and okay. why they're using this extra word. Because in my opinion, if you go and watch a basketball game and you see someone you know, score a basket, images of that event hit your eye and those images change your mind and all that proves is that things are here now and that they can be changed yes it doesn't prove that there's a thing called the future and a thing called a past and a thing called time that flows between them mm -hmm. all of those are kind of kind of big assumptions and i'm kind of going you know that's more book sales coming in already, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, the phone's ringing off the hook. So that, you see, that, that extra stuff is an assumption. Can I just say first, why is there a phone in a radio studio? One has to wonder, don't you, is it that much of a Mickey Mouse operation that we can't have our one station manager be responsible with his, with his mobile? No, yeah. no, no. We've got to have, we have, have a static phone I think if you, if you look station. at the ONFM website, it would suggest that it is a Mickey Mouse operation in the way that they exaggerate they bring in millions of pounds like Disney does. <laughs> I think it's a fantastic station. Yeah, we're saying that because the managers are coming in now. So. <laughs> sorry, well, I yeah, okay. So, get back to the. Sorry, yeah. going back to to the point then. Where, where, that's your starting point for your book. Yes, is I'm saying, what if things just move and change? And the point is this: that that 
half my friends think it's obvious time exists and the other half think it's obvious time doesn't exist interesting yeah and the other half think my maths isn't good enough but at the out. moment all, all i observe is that we can't say either way or right. no we have to define it first yes. we have to define it yeah to say whether it exists or not so do you yeah. take issue with how science defines it uh yes very much very much okay and so how does science define it and then how do you define a it? a very good starting point would be to look at einstein's relativity his first ever paper uh, of the 20 or 30 books I've read on time, most of them kind of build on relativity. And they're saying, look at what Einstein proved. You know, we can take this as being fairly consistently correct. Let's build on it. They use that as the initial <laughs> starting point. Yeah. yeah. And Einstein proved a lot of things. And some of the things he proved were very spectacular. And because he proved such spectacular things, people take what he says to be correct. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So he proved, for example, that moving clocks run slow. Right. Get two clocks, very accurate clocks, you put them side by side, you line up their hands so they're, they're both ticking and pointing the same numbers. If you take one of those clocks and you rush it away very, very rapidly, half the speed of light for some distance, and then you rush it back, you will find that the clocks are out of alignment. Now, is, is, is there scientific reasons for, for that ev evidence Absolutely, that, that, yes, that explains yeah. <coughs> why that occurs? Yes, and it's because, it's, it's going to get complicated here, but it's because the speed of light is constant. Yes. And if you move something away very rapidly, you bring it back, there's only so much change that an object can go through. And you're using up some of its change because you're changing its position. Right. That's actually the clearest that has been defined to me so far, so far. Because I've always been aware of this theory, but that's putting it a bit more into perspective now. There you go. Well, Einstein made a couple of uh, observations or assumptions. One is that we can't tell that we're moving. Although we're on the Earth now, we're spinning around at you know a thousand miles an hour and we're drifting through space at two million miles a day or whatever, we can't tell that we're moving. Just as if you're when you're on a train and it's moving very smoothly, you know, when your eyes are closed and you open up and you see another train moving, you've no idea if it's you moving or that. Yeah. It's called the principle of equivalence. Okay. And you can't tell that you're moving. He also noted that the speed of light was constant, no matter what's happening. Mm -hmm. And by forcing these two things together, he realised that moving clocks will run slow. And this is one of the things that a scientist will tell you that Einstein has proven that proves time exists. But what I am saying is, I understand what he's saying. But I'm questioning what is a clock. I think a clock is just a thing that changes. I don't think a clock proves that there's a future or that there's a past. <laughs> well, he's not here to defend himself at the moment. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give him uh, credit for if, if his first paper was what he came out with in his first paper. Mm. That's quite good because it must have been a really quite difficult good. second Unsafe album for him. <laughs> <laughs> it must have yeah. been a really difficult second album. But no, a yeah. clock though. A clock is just that itself is a physical thing that we've just worked. It, literally, it's a machine. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and, and, as you were saying, a clock, a, a clock is a machine that moves. Yeah. yeah. And, you're, and you're, you're, you're saying that 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 with movement, it will it will move at a slower rate than the one that is yeah. static. Yeah. See, the thing is, this is when this is what I wanted to get into because if his theory ends up changing the face of science, I want to give him the platform you now. You would say that we were here on the ground floor. Yeah, absolutely, yes. perfectly yeah. legitimate. So here's the thing: because no one will be able to travel back in time to ever be part of the moment themselves. So, <laughs> yes. yeah. well, here's the thing, and. and Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, is that if time exists, then clocks do tell you something about it. Yeah, you know, a clock is a very useful thing. If what time does it exists. though? Because it's just, literally it's, a clock is just uh, it only represents time because we've made it that way. Well, this is what I'm saying. This is there's an if then else kind of clause. Okay. So you have to consider that if time exists, then clocks do tell us something about it. But clocks don't prove that time exists. So what I'm saying when you look at Einstein's relativity. If time exists, then his theory tells us a lot about time. But his theory does not prove that time exists. It's written in the language of time, it's written with the assumption that time exists. Now, if time does not exist, then relativity just tells us how things change now. I but most of the books I've read seem to think that relativity proves time okay. exists and it's mixed with space. And it's this tiny, tiny detail. You know, my entire book could come down to two or three sentences. And when people get it, they will literally fall over unconscious with shock right. someone just has. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do not read this book while operating heavy machinery. Exactly. Yeah. So, so far then, we've established that you've taken issue with, with how science defines time. Yeah. But the, and, and that you've read books that you disagree with because yeah. they're making an assumption about time. Yeah. But are these books 
just bad examples of people within the scientific world and saying this is uh, saying this book represents science. Does it actually represent science excellent, at all? And excellent. when I when I say science at all, I mean like the the generally understood the bigger picture. Yeah, of sure, like, sure. No, I, I, yeah. Have I have I read books by crackpots or have I read books by by experts? No, all of the books that I've read have, have been excellent. I've learned a great deal about about you know space and physics. You know from them, mm -hmm. every one of them. Um, but I'm saying there's a, a tiny detail that we may have overlooked. You know, I'm not being big-headed saying, hey, look what I've seen, or whatever. I'm saying there's just a thing that I can see why we might have overlooked it. You know, it's science. When, you, when you're being scientific, you're not being personal you know, with anyone. You're just saying, hey, look, this is what I think is a fact. Yes. It's never a personal dig at someone. So all the books I've read have, have been brilliant, and I've learned a great deal from them. But they seem to have started with the assumption that time exists. Mm. One of the main reasons we assume time exists is because we have memories. So we remember being kids, we remember being smaller, we've got clothes that we literally couldn't get into anymore. But actually, our brains, uh, chemical reactions in our brains are just that, aren't they? So even that doesn't prove that there's a past that we remember because some people are deluded and they remember things that didn't actually happen. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. I've, <laughs> I've gone out with a few. Um, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it's funny because if we start, someone was t talking about psychological issues, it gets more complicated. A friend right, of mine said, yeah. you know, that she, as a kid, she fell out of a tree and she remembers thinking very quickly as she fell out of the tree, you know, turn over or you'll hurt your back. And that <coughs> really, that's just to do with how much you could argue that's instinct, though. Yeah, it's just that her mind was operating quicker than. But normal. this goes towards your point, though, doesn't it? Because it's the, your point essentially questions the validity of the human memory. Mm, kind of yes and no. What I'm really saying is because if we, it, it's, there's almost no point talking about the human memory in this, you know, because it'll get all kind of personal. What I remember, what I don't remember. What I'm really saying is this: if we remember being a kid and falling off a swing. What does that prove and what doesn't it prove? In my mind, it proves that as things happen to you, the contents of your mind can change. They can be reordered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The contents of your fridge can change. They can be reordered. But that doesn't prove that there is a past or that there is a future or that there's a thing called time that exists and is needed for things to be able to move. So if you say... So the point you're making is... What does it what does it go towards? Is it more of a point that you're saying um, we can't write books and make other theories based on the assumption that time exists? Yeah, I'm saying if if you write such a book, in all of the books that I've read, everything that they've said is true if time exists. Right, okay. So the the but they haven't the proven that time when you, exists. When, when you start your theories with the basis that time exists, you're already limiting yourself as to what assumptions you can come up with because yeah. you're, you're setting these rules that you have to operate within. Then again, though, science, a lot of it, it, a lot of things have been born out of that way of thinking, of being open-minded sure. to do things because um, there's a difference between what science says about time now uh, there's a difference between that and just like a random thing that you've you've guessed. I mean, they are actually basing their assumptions on things that they've observed, at least. Absolutely. And make no mistake, time works. Right. It's a brilliant system. You know, money works. It's a brilliant system. You know, without money doesn't really exist, well, but it works. I haven't seen my bank account. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> likewise. But you know, you couldn't build a, a skyscraper or an ocean liner without the idea of money. Yes. It works. It's a system. Time works brilliantly. You know, if you want to send a man to the moon, you've got to use the idea of time. You know, if you want to send a person from one moving thing to another... Well, then can you, like, um, relate to science, then, in that if they are sending people to the moon, they have to base some things on time? You can see why they're not just throwing that idea out the window. Yeah, sure, and it works. Well, my question always comes down to this. Is there really a past and really a future and really a thing okay. called time, so, or is it just an idea? So, therefore, you would say that... Um, you can't start talking about time travel because there is no past to go into. Correct. That's the fundamental thing is that, so I read these books and they're talking about time and it's a great system. Okay. You go, that's a great system, but not if you want to start talking about time yeah. travel. That's like trying to build a money detector. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, it doesn't exist. You can't detect. Now, interestingly then, your issue with time travel isn't the other issue that other people have because other people they say that there's paradoxes. Yeah, sure. Like, for instance, the grandfather paradox. Yeah. If you had a time machine, if you went back in time, you know, if you killed your grandfather, it means yeah. that he wouldn't give birth to one of your parents and yeah. then you wouldn't exist to go back 
and kill him. Yeah. However, there, then there's theories around that, such as when you go back in time, you might be going back into a parallel universe, yeah. or that there is some rule that we don't understand where it wouldn't be possible to kill your grandfather. Very good points. And here's the thing is that, say I was coming up with some theory to you now, and I said, my theory works, all you need is every now and again a parallel universe to exist. You go, mm. hold on, you're asking quite a lot there. <laughs> Get this, but this is, I've read books, and I've like watched shows. For instance, they say you could, oh, you, they've done whole shows about how you could build a time machine on, on a wormhole, and yeah. then it came out afterwards that wormholes There's are just, it's just, it's just <laughs> a theory anyway. Anyway. It's it's tricky. A, a wormhole is based around a black hole. Uh, they're Which do annoyingly exist. yes, annoyingly they're very badly named because they are black, but they're not holes. They're the complete opposite of a hole. They're very 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 dense objects. That yeah. is the opposite of a hole. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like it's just, it's the complete opposite. That's but you have to look at these <laughs> these theories because these theories can point to great things. You know, um, a black hole is called a black hole yeah. because if one was in the sky, it would suck in all the light, so it would look like a black yeah. hole. In fact, it would be one of the most dense objects you'd ever seen in your life. Seen. Right? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I know. But if we go back to a couple of things here with the, um, the paradoxes uh, and things like that, if we take it right back to Einstein's special relativity, it's called the electrodynamics of moving bodies, that was his first paper, and there he says it's very important that we're clear on what we mean by time. And to me, that's one of the most important areas to look at in this whole thing, because so much stems from it. <coughs> he then goes on to say, if I'm at a train station, and a train pulls into the station, and the, watch on my, the hand of my watch points to a seven, I say that these two things happen simultaneously. Yes. The train came in at seven o'clock. The train came in, my watch hand pointed to seven, these things happen simultaneously. From not there, the train was supposed to arrive at 7 o'clock. Right? Yeah, I was going to say, not exactly. with National Rail. <laughs> yeah. Not with National yeah. Rail. We've got great bus rail replacements that have service. So, so he says this is an example of simultaneous e events. Yeah. And I looked at that and said, well, hold on. Let's really look at what you're, you're describing here. You're proving that trains can move. You're proving that motorised hands can move on numbered dials. We call it a watch, but it's a motorised hand. And you're proving that you can compare these two things. I'm happy with that. Yes. But what you're not proving is you're not proving there's a future, and you're not proving there's a past, and you're not proving that there's a thing called time that flows between them. But did he claim that that is what it proved? Though? He's saying that this is the definition of time. But it, yeah, but is sci has science itself taken issue with that? Like, like no, no, no. Because it hasn't. Okay. because for most of us, it seems so obvious that there's a future. So past. is that their best argument then? That they <laughs> say, is it? Yeah, I mean, I've only praised one sentence from. Yeah. It. It's <laughs> no. There's much. There's many more things that occur. If you if you have a GPS system in your car, that system communicates with satellites that go around the world. These satellites orbit at something like 20,000 kilometres and they travel at something like 16,000 kilometres now. Because they are travelling so fast, the satellites, their clocks run slow, as Einstein said they would, you know, before satellites were even conceived. So he made a brilliant deduction that turned out to be correct. So when people look at that deduction, they go, wow, Einstein was right about time. So everything else he said about time is probably correct. And I'm saying, no, no, he was right about the speed at which things change. These machines on the satellites change more slowly, but they don't travel from the future into the past more slowly. Yeah. They just change more slowly. And it, the difference is not semantics, because if you think that that's the same thing as time, then things like time travel become considered. And what I'm saying, I think it's phenomenal, because when I'm saying that there literally is no past, and when you think about that, it's really bizarre, because you suddenly go, wow, there really isn't a past. But you would agree so I didn't do any of that terrible stuff. You it's did it. <laughs> it's not <laughs> but, you, but actually, though, you can't, you can't actually say, hmm, that works both ways, though, because you ca you're saying it doesn't prove that there's a past, but mm -hmm. at the same time, nothing you're saying disproves that there's a past. Excellent bit of logic, yeah. Uh, to believe anything, we need two things. We need a good reason to suspect it in the first place, and then we need some evidence yeah. to prove it. And for you, memory and recordings of yeah. things, it isn't good enough evidence. Not good enough evidence because... No, you take issue with it. Because it does right. prove, it does prove that things can move and change. Okay, yeah. Definitely agree that. Yeah. That's clear, yeah? Just as a, a dog putting its paw in wet cement 
you know, can change that cement. The dog yeah. walks off, but we've apparently yeah. got some We're not coming across that past. scientific experiment in, yeah. the, in the labs. But, I've, you know. I've used that yeah. too many dogs on it. Um, so I'm saying that look at what these things prove. And we could agree, we could agree, say, if we're making a recording, um, does this prove things exist? Yes. Does it prove that things can interact? Yes. Does it prove that there's also a thing called time? And that's why I would say, well, no, it doesn't prove that. I can mm. see why you assume it. But does it really prove that as things happen, there's a perfect record created somewhere in a thing called the past? Now where? Why? What would power it? Where is it stored? And even if it did create a past, how would you know? Because you don't go back and check. All you ever do is look inside your head. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So even if it existed... Okay. Um, the issue of the future, then. Yeah. Because we're, we're saying past more than we're saying future. Yeah, absolutely. But, but actually, yeah. you're saying it can't prove that either. Yes. Do you agree, though, that you can, in your mind, think of something in theory, and then, depending on what you do, you can create a sequence of events that then leads towards that certain thing happening? Sure. Right. So you kind of if set If that's goal not or... the future, what is that to you? It's, um, what is that to me? It's really you thinking of something and, and trying to do it. <laughs> you know yeah, but that's... isn't that... That's... I understand exactly what you mean. You're setting a goal. You're, you're, you yeah. might choose to meet and someone that, on and Friday. And we know that that's going to happen in the in what I can't. Well, it goes to show that I, I mean I can't think of any other way of describing it than in the future. Yeah, sure, I understand. So, yeah. but yeah. how would you not operate within that terminology? The trick is the trick is always to stop and just ask. You know, what do we first see? We see things moving, changing, and interacting, and then ask, would that explain everything? Would that explain how you can create a sentence like that? Would that explain how you could have a thought like that? But what I mean is you go on, we all go on what we know best, don't yeah, we? Yeah, sure. And like we're saying with gravity, we all agree on it. Yeah. Even though science would say we can't definitely, d you know, yeah. one, one instance you have to, to disprove it would, would disprove it. Sure, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. But you, you in your life must do things, you know, you turned up here at 10 yeah. to 2, as we discussed, so yeah. it's like you do plan things yeah. and then make them happen, yes. don't you? Yeah. So you must think that there, that you have enough confidence in the future, for lack of a better description, to bother doing things now that shape it. Yeah, very, very well put. Um, and the way out, well, again, one of the problems is that if we start using the language of time before we proved it exists, yeah. things will get complicated. If we start talking about, say, magic... But how, so what I'm saying is, how would you describe what I've just described? I will, I will do it. I'll without do it. time. Then. I'll do it. But okay. what I'm saying is, if, say, we were having a discussion about magic, and I say, look, if, if magic doesn't exist, how come things disappear? Yes, I'm but kind of no, tangling but, you in a knot. But we have we have a better explanation because we know the technique of how that magic yeah, works. Absolutely. But that doesn't disprove what you're, that doesn't discredit what you're saying because what you're saying is I have a better explanation than observation with the future thing. Yeah. Yes. What I'm saying with the magic thing is just consider this point that if I start using words that actually aren't valid, mm. things get complicated. No, that's yeah. No, it's point an invalid taken on that, question yeah. how things disappear because they don't disappear. Right. As you point out. So one thing to do is to sit in a park and wait and see if the future arrives and what will actually happen i mean it will get dark it will get light you know it may rain it may not people turn up people leave but all you will actually see is things moving now you will never see the future arrive. now while you're sitting there you can have several thoughts you can think oh, i'll get up and have an ice cream and you may get up and have an ice cream or you may not you can have any kind of thoughts that you want so you come back to it as saying this just proves that things happen you yeah what yeah. it proves okay. is that you can construct thoughts in your mind but that leads me on to another question though yeah which is that which is that you uh, you must agree or uh, maybe not because of what you're saying but i'd be interested in how you'd how you'd um tackle it then but you must agree that it Yes, things happen, but there are also certain actions that le lead to certain outcomes. For instance, if I stabbed you in the heart, yeah. you would... Yeah, I mean, OK, apart from, like, some miracle surgery or something, but, like, let's sure. just say, you yeah. know, more often than not, you, you are going to yeah. die, yeah. and you couldn't reverse... Absolutely. It, ...and you wouldn't be able to become, become alive again. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm saying is there are certain sequences of events that you almost can't take issue with, sure. or do you? There's a couple of things. No, I'd take issue with them all. Um, <laughs> with that, with that situation with the stabbing me in the heart, you know, a bit intense for a guest. Would, but, you know, um, <laughs> but what it is is this: you're thinking about that now, and if you're doing it, you would be doing it now. And if I was dying, I would be doing it now. We would only ever be doing something now. If you're in a car and you're, if you're going to stab me, you're going to stab me. If you're going to Birmingham, you're going to Birmingham. That's what you're doing now. 
no matter how fully or unfully the idea is formed. I wrote one little um, experiment in my book and I said, imagine you have three engineering students. You put each one in a separate room with a model of a bridge and some instructions. The first one comes out and says, I've worked out why the bridge did collapse. It was because of this error. The other one comes out and says, don't build this bridge, it will collapse because of this error. And the other one comes out and says, you've got to stop people using this bridge now because it's, it's going to collapse. You know, it's got an error. One of them thinks that he's thinking about the past, and one of them thinks that he's thinking about the present, and one of them thinks that he's thinking about the future. But they're all just thinking now. No matter how you look at your thoughts. Yes, but there is but there are certain actions that they can then take which from history we can assume and have a good estimate on what will happen. Yeah. Yeah, what will happen. It's tricky, I mean, like, even all of that history that you're talking about, you're talking about stuff that's lying around there well, that I'm, I could have I'm, a look at. Well, uh, I'm aware of, when I was saying it, I was aware of that. But I don't know how else to say it, and I think that... Do, I don't know how else to say it. Now, does that mean that we don't have a better system than time, or does it mean that it must exist? In my... No, it, we have a better system. I know it time works as a system. Exist, it it sure makes sense. Well, one of the, the reasons <laughs> it makes sense is because everything's constantly changing, and some things change in very orderly ways, and some things change in a chaotic way. What I'm saying is that you will, you will never see the point that I'm trying to make if you look at it in terms of time. Right and if time happens not yeah. to exist. So you look at it, by all means look at it in terms of time, but then also ask yourself this question, what if things just move and change? Okay. Would I be able to have these thoughts if things just move and change? Yeah. I, think, I think one of the things might be, though, that I think a lot of people would logically understand that, in theory, mm. but I think that in the interest of people like scientists and just everyday people interested in science, they go on what... they, they I think that they take the assumptions about time because they can build other theories on it and that's exciting to them. Exciting and it works and I'm happy for for it and it, it makes great sense you can do wonderful things like literally you can get to the moon you would not be able to get mm. to the moon without the idea of right. time it's such a great mathematical yeah. system um, but there are limits uh, it, it's like magic is a great idea we love watching it but you shouldn't get carried away right yeah there's a border where you think no we, we can't go beyond this is we got to understand this is mathematics and the mathematics helps us but the mathematics doesn't create the reality okay the same so you could not travel through time forwards or backwards I'm looking at and the reason one of the reasons this becomes very important at the moment is because people are trying to unify Einstein's theories of relativity with quantum mechanics and they're saying there's a problem and the problem is this on a grand scale, it looks like things can only happen forwards. Like you were saying, you might stab me, I would die, but that could not be undone. Yes. On a very small scale, it looks like things are time reversible. And a lot of scientists are having a problem mixing these two ideas. And I'm saying, if you stop, you'll see that there's no such thing as time. It's not reversible or not reversible. It doesn't go in one direction or not. It just doesn't exist. Okay. With the example of the stabbing, you could compare it in a simpler, less violent uh, <laughs> case to a vase. Yeah. We smash a vase, it breaks, yeah. but we never see the opposite. Yeah. Now, if time exists, that proves that there's a direction to time. But if time doesn't exist, that just proves that vases break. Can you see what we put I so do much see what you mean. on it? It's weird, though, because I see what you mean, but everything I say back, I have to admit, is based on my assumptions about yeah. time, about what I always knew. And about what I always thought, thought I knew. Yeah. Yes. Well, one of the reasons... Then one you of got the through the whole hour without like, saying something wrong. <laughs> you <laughs> did perfectly. No, you, you, you haven't said anything wrong. And one of the things is, when you say you always knew it, did you find that out for yourself as a kid and say to your parents, I think there's a thing that kind of passes from a place where, yeah, it's called time, or did they tell you it existed? Did they point to a motor on a wall with a hand on it and say bedtime? To be perfectly honest, I, well, I don't think pointing on... Uh, saying bedtime, pointing to the thing on the wall actually conveys to me what they understand about time now. I think its parents were a little bit more eloquent than that. <laughs> but the problem is that they say bedtime and you end up in bed, so you start buying into the idea that beds exist, so this time thing probably does. Yeah, but then there's also, I know, for instance, that if what we know about, what we understand about how long eight hours seems to us, yeah. I know that if I don't go to bed, I'm going to be tired the next sure. day. So there's all of, um, there's all of that. But um, unfortunately, it's coming up to the end of the, sh uh, the end of the show now, so it goes so quickly, but I want to give you a chance to, if there's a, something that you haven't touched upon that you yeah. really want to say, uh, your platform is here now. Thank you so much. Um, well, it's all said in the in the uh, Amazon Kindle book. Sorry for that shameless plug. Uh, no, that's out what there. we're here for. <coughs> um, 
really, what can I say? It's just just to ask yourself this question, yeah, what if things just move and change? It's Einstein said that the distinctions between the past and the present and the future were just a persistent illusion. And I'm saying it's actually a wonderfully persistent illusion. <coughs> the world is almost exactly as if time exists, because we all live and because we all, we're all like cars that are running and ticking over. You can never stop yourself ticking over, so you're going to wear out. Yeah. But that's not because there's a future and it's not because there's a past. One of the things that can affect in people's personal lives is you start realizing that if everything's now and everything's here now, you can always fix problems because they're always here now. Yeah, what's the ne the tomorrow is the um, tomorrow's the first day of the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tomorrow, I thought it was today. <laughs> Today's the first day of the rest. Of the life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with with, with Xbox speaking, it's always tomorrow. Yesterday it's was tomorrow. yesterday was the last day of the end of the life up well, to actually, now. Actually, no, but actually, tomorrow would be tomorrow. It would be the first day. The thing to do: life. sit in a park and have a look around and see if you can see the future arrive. And you will not see it arrive. All you'll see is existing things moving and changing, and it. it leaves you in a very nice place somehow you know uh, that you, you just stop and you walk down the street and you realize that all these pressures that we have about time are only ever down to other people telling us we got pressure yeah but then time. does that mean that you, you are you responsible for your actions in the if someone said to you do you hold yourself responsible for your actions in the past would you say well actually there is no past so no i'm a free uh, i hold, hold myself responsible for the state of the world around me and okay. what I've done in it. So if you <coughs> upset someone yesterday and you, you turn up and you see them tomorrow, well, you know that they're upset. It, it just is how it is. Everything I'm in is. But, th but that's you. Yes, okay then. But then what if they were acting not upset because they were putting on a front? <laughs> Okay, well, I think you have your. Uh, y yeah, you have your. Because own that's internal. actually another thing that actually you can look at things in front of you and it doesn't necessarily what you see isn't necessarily how they are. So that would so be a flaw in that you way. You could ask them a question, direct question, are you, are you unhappy about acting happy? And if they, if they still mislead you, then that's their responsibility. Well, okay. <laughs> right. okay, yeah. I'm going to use that with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if people um, would like to, fi to find where to buy the book, where would that, where they go? For, um, for timelessness.co.uk. Oh, you've got your own, your, your own uh, dedicated website. Absolutely, that's got the PowerPoint talks. There's about Fantastic. five or six hours of videos of me pointing to slides with lots of crazy diagrams. That's where you can link to the Kindle book, which I should point out has not been professionally edited, which is why <laughs> I'm selling it at, at a rock bottom uh, uh, price. But anyone who wants to email with me with any questions. So I didn't actually re realize that on, on your, your, your website, you've got these PowerPoint presentations that actually do delve deeper into some of the things that we've yeah. been discussing on the show. So for anyone who's interested in some of the points that we've raised and would like to find out more and maybe broaden their horizons a little bit, go to timelessness.co.uk where you can w watch uh, all, all of these PowerPoint presentations, have it explained out in even, even more <coughs> detail than we've got into today, and uh, hopefully become a little bit more learned in the process. Absolutely. Okay, well, um, don't go away, listeners, because we are coming back with more guests uh, for another hour. Although I'm sure, Matt, you'd perhaps take issue with, with, uh, with the... They exist and they're doing something guests, now. Guests right? will be moving <laughs> into the room. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Guys, thanks.